Now, if you like JavaScript, this presentation is for you. Dean Trivel, CEO of Agoric, welcome to the stage. Hello, I'm Jack Zamp. Oh, no, no, I'm Dean Tribble. <laughs> so, and I'm going to talk about a JavaScript odyssey, as she said. But before I go into that, this kind of all started with a vision. And it was a vision back starting as, you know, in the 80s when networks started first being available broadly um, of software that enables strangers to cooperate by enforcing the terms of the agreements that they've made. And we saw the possibility of that back in the 80s with the first production smart contract, in the 90s when Nick Zabo and us worked together to do early versions of the Agoric technology, in 2000 when we joined the standards committee for JavaScript to drive into JavaScript the elements needed for it to be something that I could talk to you today, today about, and then finally 2010, 2018, whatever it was, when we founded Agoric to build this. And it's been a long journey, but now we've crossed to having something that, that, you know, a platform to launch on and take the JavaScript Odyssey going forward. And that whole vision of software enabling strangers to cooperate and all the many ways that we do that across the economy is not there's 20 contracts and, you know, there's an AMM and there's a, there's a perp engine and there's a lending protocol and now we're done, right? It's not even... Now we've got ticket sales, so that's a very good first step out from being pure digital into, a, into actually interacting with end users. No, no. In the extended larger economy, ticket sales is the beginning of the interaction the person has, or maybe it's the middle of the interaction the person has with the event that they're going to. There might be VIP parking, dinner reservations. They got the ticket through a lottery of the fan club that they've earned membership in, you know, and they've been there more than once, and they can show they've been at prior concerts, or they've been at prior conferences, whatever it is. And so all of these elements where we just right now are barely starting to touch the real world of, of using software from blockchain will turn into little economies themselves rather than hopefully these large-scale monopolies that you see in, in the Web2 world, right? And so that's what the focus is, is not a few thousand maybe contracts where right now in Ethereum you can get, you get there are 6,000 developers estimated that can actually build a credible contract. No, it's hundreds of thousands of contracts built by millions of people to solve all the everyday problems that, we all, that, that currently software engages in and that would be vastly improved and enable you to cooperate with more strangers in a successful way that adds value to both your lives by having smart contracts do it, right? So that's the beginning of the journey, and, that's, and crypto from my perspective and blockchain from my perspective is at the beginning of that journey. So where, does, where is Agoric at? Where is it starting? Well, so it all starts with programmability, right? We've got a general purpose smart contract platform. It's a blockchain based, you know, built on Cosmos SDK and Comet, and built so you could program smart contracts in the most popular programming language on the planet using a modern component framework, you know, the kind of thing like React or Vue that, that, that frankly, largely JavaScript is the place where people are able to successfully build these real extensible frameworks and be adopted by lots of people. And then natively integrating and working well with assets across the interchain, async operations across multiple chains and, you know, over squid to Filecoin and Avalanche and Ethereum and so forth. And so it's all those pieces coming together that makes the Agoric platform a different thing than most of the blockchains that are out there, right? So for Web2 JavaScript developers and to the nearest 1%, that means all JavaScript developers, right? Because there's such a tiny fraction of developers currently in Web3. For JavaScript developers that are interested in Web3, and especially from our perspective, we're going after the ones that are outside of the community right now, but they could benefit from, from, from the, the, the support for, for uh, asset ownership, the support for asset transfer, the support for cooperation. 
What Agoric provides and uniquely provides is the programmability where they can use their existing tools, their existing environments, and their existing expertise to solve their problems and provide Web3 solutions to everyday problems to billions of users. And that's the goal, that's the mission we're on, and that's the unique value that, that Agoric, now we, we've launched and have the JavaScript platform and things built on top of it, which I'll talk about in a moment, that's what, that, that's what we're now on the Odyssey to go, to, to go succeed at, right? So, now, down in the right, actually, if I go back, right, you can see there's sort of discover, right? Think about this from the developer journey point of view, right? DevRels, there's this developer journey. And so what you have now done is you have discovered Agoric, right? From a developer's point of view, you need to encounter it. And we have, um, like Thursday, there is, a wet, there is a dev day for Agoric that isn't for all y'all. It's for your friends that are JavaScript developers that aren't in Web3 yet. Send those people, right? Go to the App Jam room downstairs and get them signed up. But that's our starting to reach out to the extended community of JavaScript developers, start bringing them in because we help them solve their problems, right? And so then the next step after discover is evaluate. A new developer is going to figure out, is this something, are the resources there for me to succeed at, at what I want to be able to do? Well, so one of the first things they look, might look at is, is either technical cred or the ecosystem. So, you know, we have wallet providers, you know, Kepler, we've even got integration to support some of these special um, intent-like offer interaction stuff that we have um, in our uh, user model for smart contracts on Agoric. We also uh, worked with MetaMask over the last uh, uh, couple of years, and I actually found the original message where MetaMask reached out to ask us for help on, on this JavaScript stuff. Right? We work with MetaMask to build the hardened JavaScript that MetaMask Snaps is based on. Right? So MetaMask now has extensibility using JavaScript that will enable the 30 million users of MetaMask to be able to smoothly come right on in and, you know, and, and visit applications that are, that are awesome and being built in the Cosmos ecosystem. And now they don't have to go, well, I've already got MetaMask installed. Wait, I have to install another wallet? doesn't matter if it's awesome like Kepler. It's another wallet. I don't want to do that. We would like that, those 30 million users to have a graceful experience you know, until, of course, it all gets replaced with the cool design stuff that, 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 that um, Osmosis was talking about earlier. Say, thank you, Sonny, right? But that, that infrastructure, okay, great. Our technology that we built, clearly some well-known, long-lived, very, very, very high-value projects are using that technology to get ahead. And so Mystic Labs built a snap uh, for Cosmos, funded it, you know, um, uh, Yusuf talked about it earlier. Um, Leap Wallet built a snap to in pull you into the Leap Wallet. That same technology is users built Bitcoin snaps, so you could sign in Bitcoin. Solana snaps, so you could sign in Solana, right? So there's a lot of engine, a lot of the crypto world out there now relying on our technology. That's a good checkbox for devs coming in, right? And we've got smooth integration and you know leverage assets and 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 um, uh, 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 you know. IBC access to assets economically with Osmosis, Crescent, um, Shade, Stella Swap, and so forth. That goes back to, you know, the, 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 these assets are now available from Agoric onto those chains. Um, and lending protocols with UMI, right? So we've got integration with the cool, you know, multiple zone connected economy of the, block, of, of, of the Cosmoverse, of the interchain. Um, we've got payments. IST, you'll hear more about later. Zucky will be on a panel for stable tokens. He'll be talking about that. We've got fiat on ramp and soon off ramp with Kato integration, both smoothly into the assets on chain, but also made available to the applications building on Agoric so they can do straight, you know, swipe a credit card, buy an NFT kind of thing. And we've got the infrastructure for finance, right? We've got a Chainlink-inspired Oracle network that's simply staking Drove that's being run right now by, by five top-notch, well-respected, you know, robust, you know, system engineering uh, groups um, to, to provide the Oracle network on Agoric, you know, with data indexing so that you get the info for, for uh, you know, you get, you get the ability to query about historical info for applications running on the system like inter, uh, Interprotocol. And so all of these things that, as a developer that's coming from Web2, where I've got pretty high expectations because it's a pretty mature world, We've got those pieces, right? They can see that their ability to build and ship is, 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 is pretty substantial. 
And then we have the economic integration, right? We've had, you know, Aegis custody, Anchorage custody, Finua, you know, very coinless, etc. We've got um, trading on Huobi, and, you know, this is my alpha slide, uh, uh, BitGo uh, just added build support for their 1,500 plus, you know, exchanges, crypto traders, you know, token holders, and, and enterprise and institutions, so that now um, transfer custody and staking of Agoric build is available to those networks. So it'll be exciting to see, uh, and, and, and we'll tell you more in the future about where that goes. So we're very excited about that. Um, and, of course, we, we work with Coindesk, and they've got trading and integration as well. And then finally, we've got the bridges. You know, we work with Axelar, Gravity. I think of Squid as a separate bridge because they'll show active helping development and it smoothly integrates all the way up into JavaScript. And then, of course, there's our awesome validator set, which is a lot of, a lot of you out there, a lot of experienced validators that run across multiple chains and that, build, you know, that really drive and test the upgrades to the chain, as well as, of course, the backers that helped to, to, to make the, the project possible. And the cool thing about this is the validators, several of these ecosystem participants and several of the backers, I mean, they're helping to start put on developer events so we can start recruiting non-crypto developers into the space. They're helping to put on webinars um, where we can teach people how to, you know, deep dive, how to integrate, you know, uh, uh, payment on-ramp and that sort of stuff. So, you know, so, so the ecosystem is active, it's growing, and outsiders are going to be, are, are able to see that. So that was Evaluate. The biggest thing from Evaluate is, of course, could I do this? And the answer is, yeah, you're already an expert at JavaScript. You already know how to do server-side programming. You know, already know how to do application development. So it's not like you've got to learn a strange new language with some weird stuff that doesn't quite make sense and all that sort of thing. And I'm not referring to Rust, of course. I'm referring to, you know, Move and Solidity. Rust is awesome. One of the important things is Rust is awesome. It will continue to be awesome. People will do great systems engineering with it. And regardless, there will still be 10 million plus developers that what they want to program in is JavaScript. And the, we need those developers. We are the opportunity for those developers. And so it's just JavaScript. We've had people come in and build awesome stuff. And when asked, how did you figure it out? Well, they looked at the doc site. It's just JavaScript. There's a doc site, right? We've been enhancing our documentation to start getting to that level, that very high bar that most of the crypto ecosystem, frankly, is not, that mainstream developers expect from their developer experience, expect from their documentation, and frankly, expect from their tools. So then there's other things for them to learn, right? They can obviously learn JavaScript. Oh, yeah, that's part of the learning thing, right? What does it take to learn the system? Oh, I already know JavaScript, right? Um, but for the rest of the system, the, 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 the safety features, the, 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 the asset model, the framework that we provide for the rest of the system, um, there's doc site that are, that, that, that are recognizable, these people. So what, what is the system, right? There's some people here who haven't seen it before, right? We are Cosmos-based Tendermint with BLD as the staking token. It's like Atom. Um, with the Agoric VM, the JavaScript VM that runs this hardened JavaScript. You may have heard of that. The right characterization is hardened JavaScript is the JavaScript you thought you were programming in rather than the one that some evil library corrupted and stole your secrets with. And so the, the, the security properties, the safety properties in hardened JavaScript are a familiar programming environment and all your normal tools work, but you know that something can't come along and change what it means to be an array, right? Um, and so to, to that we added deterministic execution, checkpoint restart, you know, data storage, all these kinds of things. And then on top of that, we built the Zoe framework, right? JavaScript is the number one programming language, not because it's an awesome, wonderful language, but because you can build real frameworks with it that enable users to build components that can be reused. And that's one of those things where it's not just about getting JavaScript, it's about getting the framework, where like with React, you get affordances, that's a framework for user interfaces that many people here have built stuff with. And you have affordances for mouse clicks and rendering and an asynchronous update from, from, from whatever your data source is. Our framework has affinity for, has support for, you know, escrow and trading and pricing and transfer of assets and claiming assets and, and, and all those kinds of things. And it enables more components to be built to put, to put together to do these things. On top of that, using that framework is IST. So IST is the stable token that is built in Agoric or in JavaScript on Agoric. It was originally designed as the fee token for Agoric. So one of the you know, elements that I, that I, that I, that I like to talk about is 
when you look at these blockchains like Ethereum, where you're paying gas with ETH, right? ETH is clearly a volatile commodity, you know, like, like uh, um, uh, gold or, you know, Apple shares or whatever it is. And so, and if you think of the gas as like your rent, if you're a business, that's just your business expense. You, you know, gas is only important to you because you don't really want to pay it, but you have to, right? That's like paying your rent with Apple shares or gold. You can do it, but a thousand years ago we figured out that an that economy with a currency there is better. It functions better. It pulls sand out of the gears, so you've got a better functioning economic engine, and you can tell that your rent is the same this month as it was last month, right? And so IST is a stable token that is intrinsic to the overall tokenomics of Agoric, but actually at the very first Cosmoverse, we were inspired by, by reactions to IST to, that, that, that it should be a stable token for the interchain. And so it, so it grew in terms of, right, it's, from my perspective, a part of the Atom Economic Zone in that it launched with MakerDAO-style vaults backed by Atom Collateral. And they've got staked Atom and, and Noble USDC and Kava USDT. All of those are starting to be integrated in by this now largely independent community that is driving the growth and evolution of IST. So it is the fee token for Agoric, but it's intended as the, the, the driving, you know, underpinning wiring of the economy, a dollar, uh, pa dollar parity stable token token for the economy of applications and, and decentralized applications running on top of Agoric. And then on top of all of that, of course, you get to use all those components and all of these tools to build your own applications. All right, I'm going to move fairly quickly. I've talked about components before. This is one of the things that when you go to build, it's a component environment, and there's a bunch of interesting components that you can clone, use, adapt, change, or contribute to. That's why, again, why JavaScript takes off, why Node took off, is you've got NPM where everyone knows there's going to be components, and they know they can get rep by adding more components. We have the same advantage. Um, and, of course, there's best-in-class tools. And I don't mean just, you know, great, I got to use something that kind of looked like VS Code, or maybe I kind of twisted it in there. No, no. It's, you know, this is standard testing tools, right? Ava or Jest, right, are standard JavaScript testing tools. It's CI that all integrates with the reporting and roll-up inside of multiple applications. You know, it's got, you know, type completion and type information and pop-up help and IntelliSense and all the things that, you know, that, that modern developers in the mainstream world expect from their development environment. You know, breakpoints and debuggers where you can stop in the execution of a contract and then retry it and see what's going on. And so all of the, you know, and, then, and test infrastructure, you know, uh, Jack was talking about the, the, the chain test stuff. We have a similar thing called Instagoric, which lets us run multiple test nets quickly, some of which have been running for a very long time to test upgrades to the infrastructure, but also we have applications that people have been building that they get to deploy to the test nets and run, and, and you know, we've got relayers from the test nets to other people's test nets and all those kinds of things. So it's a very active environment in which developers are starting to build in terms of support for them to be able to get their job done. And in that environment, right, you know, the ones that, that we're talking about today that have been building are, you know, Crabble, that's, I'd say, NFT lending. I love that people go, oh, you're buying, no, no, it's not borrowing money against your NFTs. It's I've got an NFT that will get me into a club, or I've got an NFT that represents, you know, the participation in some membership group, which I want to lend to someone who is also going to the VAT event, and they would like the discount at the bar that it gives me, or they would like the, 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 the um, uh, uh, improvement in, their, in the order they get on board the airplane, or whatever it is that membership in an org represented by these NFTs that, that people will be collecting in the future, you know, as part of their sort of normal engagement in commerce, you can lend them out. So NFTs with function I, that you want to be able to use. <clears throat> Tickets, member, box seats, all those kinds of things. We have Calypso, and I'll kind of go into more detail on each of these. If I push a button, there we go. Like Calypso, so that is, you know, smart contract that uses all of our async access to all of these other chains, you know, where you can just send a message to unbond on osmosis and do a async await in JavaScript, and when that's done, transfer it over a bridge or, you know, whatever it is that you're going to do in some multi-stage complex interaction. And, you know, and these guys at Mystic Labs pioneered that in addition to doing that, 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 that Cosmos snap. Um, and so they've got a, you know, self-custodial interchain trading terminal for non-crypto folks to be able to start getting into crypto so they can access these interesting economic institutions that, 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 that all of crypto and, and Calypso themselves are bringing to the table. 
I got to move very quickly because I'm running out of time here. Uh, we have CREAD. Um, so CREAD, CREAD is, I could talk for the, you know, the rest of the conference about it. It's not just NFTs, right? It is nested NFTs where if I've got a game character or I've got a story character, you know, that, that is participating in online world creation. You know, this is a particular characterization where that character has a particular mask, a particular hairdo, has, you know, various jewelry, that sort of thing, each of which themselves are NFTs, right? If you look at games, your characters are not one thing that never mutates. It's a dynamic thing. It's dynamic both in that you can change what it's equipped with and also in that it accumulates story that is not part of the character itself, but is story that dynamically extends over time. And both of those are ways that these sort of static NFTs, which are great and interesting and got the ball rolling, but they're just the beginning, right? And so, you know, go downstairs, play with this thing, because they're not in the build stage, they're in the launch stage. And this contract went live in production literally last night, um, where you can now go to the app and mint, and, and mint NFTs, you know, buy components, configure them, turn around and sell the combination um, or trade it with it, trade it or what have you. So it's an awesome new application, an awesome new step forward in what we'll be able to do with this. And it's, you know, and, and they didn't bring out just here's an application. This is all built with interesting new NFT management components on chain that are also reusable components and the artist Emmanuel that did this art and a whole lot else in their thing is down there as well. So it's, you know, NFT toolkit components, this application and sales infrastructure you can buy and sell these things and a, 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 a NFT release. So, um, and where is all this showing up, right? It's showing up downstairs, or not downstairs, right outside, right around the corner, there's an app jam room that has all of the, you know, Crabble, you know, Calypso, Crya, inter-protocol inter folks, all that are, that are willing and interested to both demo and show you this, get you set up so that you can use them, get you on the wait list if that's where they're at, um, and explain how it all works. And if you're a developer, they can talk to you about how they got here and really what's the environment and ecosystem like going forward that these people are the seeds for. And so as I go from launch into scaling, which is really the next piece, you know, there's that app down there. You can buy your NFTs with IST, the Interstable Token. Um, and so, you know, go and Interstable Token is already launched. It's already out there. It's already in the scale phase where they're adding ST Atom, they're adding all these, all the, you know, noble USDC, et cetera. And so you can get your IST by trade it on one of those parity st stability modules. You can create a vault, take your Atom and lock it up, and later, later this month or whatever, you'll be able to take ST Atom as well. Purchase it on Kato, where you can just swipe a credit card, well, after you set up an account, and get IST that way. Or buy it on one of the, any, you know, whatever your favorite DEX is, because they all have pools, because IST is growing to be everywhere. So, you know, do that, interact with the interesting smart contracts on chain in the app room over there where they've got, you know, contests and, they, and, and gaming and relaxing and, and conversation. So, it's a, so the app jam room is, 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 you know, the end of your odyssey today, and I'm almost done here, is to go there later and get involved in the fun things that are happening there um, because, uh, um, you know, and if you tell them you saw the talk that you get more points for the various games and contests, some of which, you know, ends up as an, uh, uh, I know some people were interested in the Nintendo Switch prize, but there are other interesting prizes that people are doing, so. Um, and that's both showing the show here and also people are playing games there. So, that's the end of the Odyssey today, right? But the fundamental thing for developers is all of those phases were the phases that, that, that a developer has to go through or that will go through in order to get to the point where they build, launch, and start scaling an application. And I talked some about a little, a little bit of the non-traditional, much more mainstream use cases of not just ticketing, but all of the ecosystem of small businesses cooperating, creating events. You know, freight chain of custody spawns financial applications and applications to scan and, and do safe custody of actual physical packages and monitoring of geoposition of things and insurance and all these smart contracts where any one of these businesses is tens of thousands of contracts for millions of activity that will require literally millions of developers to build this stuff. So what my ask of you is, is if you know of a Web2 application or Web2 developer that is interested in Web3, 
they've probably already got JavaScript developers, and we, would, we will enable them to be able to roll that sort of stuff out and evolve it much more quickly over time, where they don't have to find one of those scarce uh, Solidity developers, heaven for fend, you know, or the not quite as scarce, but still scarce and really expensive um, uh, Rust developers. They can use the people that are already working there to build the next generation of smart contract software. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this particular odyssey and will join us on the rest of it.